I am connected to Instagram. Hello. Oh, here we go. All right, you have some people joining us too on, on Instagram. I had um, Lester playing on my PA, PA system. <laughs> on your PA system? <laughs> yes. That's getting cool. a little fancy over here. I'm trying to get set up so that our two cameras all working at the same time. All right, can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. I'm getting a little bit of feedback. I'm trying to get rid of that. I think it's really 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 volume. I did that. Yeah, and it's um. I'm gonna test. If I disappear, I'll come back. I promise. You're still here. Yeah, I'm still here. Marcy, you're early. Thank you. <laughs> Okay. I see ya. Okay. I think I'm back. back. Thank All you. All right. Man. This is fancy. Got two cameras going. This is cool. <laughs> and there's a delay between them. <laughs> <laughs> wait. Oh, oh man. man. Here we go. So I'll wait a couple of minutes. Okay. Megan, what you up to today? Working, so this is my lunch break. <laughs> yep. Mine too. The best, the best lunch break ever. ever. <laughs> Oh, uh, so maybe sure. maybe you guys should say what it is that you do for your living. Okay. Yeah, I'm, a, I'm a project manager for a security services company. Well, that's so cool. we do a lot of stuff with uh, in the car industry and then um, high trust, which is the health care industry security services. Okay. You get an echo from I know, it's my <laughs> it's my phone. I can't. Okay. So everyone, everyone can you. If you have not already. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna use my phone instead of using my laptop. Does that is that better? Um, I don't. I don't think it matters. I mean, can you hear me? Whatever. I can hear you. Okay. So so yeah, I turned off my laptop sound and I'm using my phone sound. So that'll be. And you're still. I can still hear you on Instagram too. Excellent. Okay. Hey, Susan. So today we're going to be talking about barbershop. Yeah. With no. the amazing Jenny Harris. Oh. I don't know if you know this, Jenny, but I think you're like one of the coolest people Aww. from a region that's a queen. <laughs> Thanks. That, you know, I was just talking with my daughter, or my, my kid the other day, and I said, I think, I think you're one of the coolest people that I know. And they're like, what? So I think if somebody gets told that they're a cool person, the, the reaction is usually, 
why? <laughs> why do you think that? I don't yeah. like that at all. But I really appreciate you saying that. It makes me feel good. Thank you. I think you're really cool, Ashley. You're you got your finger in a lot of pies and you're really working hard to bring music to the masses. And so that's really cool. Thank you. I just really want people to be aware of of our craft. Mm -hmm. Because not even people are familiar with barbershop. And I know when I've come in contact with people, they always ask me, why are you doing that? Right. Like, you were singing that stuff? Yeah. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that stuff. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> that kind of music. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I'm, I, I wanted to do this, do this more and make people aware on my page on Instagram, my page on Facebook. Barbershop is for everyone. Mm -hmm. It's everywhere. Yep. <laughs> this isn't new. <laughs> yep. Over a hundred years. Been for a while. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, so I just want to bring that awareness. And I wanted you to be one of the people that I interview. Because you've been singing Barbershop just about as long as I have. And you've been on this wonderful journey. The way you came in. And your years with Luster. And yep. yeah, absolutely. Which is not easy. I mean, like, this is like the longest relationship ever. This is like a marriage. <laughs> we definitely do think of our quartet relationship as a marriage. In fact, we give classes about how to stay sane in your quartet marriage. So we've learned some things along the way about how to stay together as a quartet and how to really honor each other and and uh, just really thrive. Um, and we share those. And some of those we learned the hard way because, you know, it's not all sunshine and rainbows all the time in Lusterland. No. Um, you know, we get through it because of the way we've built our relationship. So it's a real blessing to me, I'll tell you that. So let's share your full musical background. Okay. Everything you've done, even before Barbershop and how you got started, why you wanted to be a part of Barbershop. Sure. Let's get into that. Yeah, okay. Well, I was in a musical family. My mom was the church organist when I was little, and uh, she also directed off and on different uh, children's choirs and church choirs and things like that. She was a Girl Scout leader, and she was always the music leader at the Girl Scout camp. And, you know, music's been part of my life forever. I have three sisters, which sounds an awful lot like a barbershop quartet, although we, <laughs> we haven't yet done that. But... Um, uh, yeah, so music just was there. In fact, I told somebody the other day, it's true that I learned to read music before I learned to read words. So I can't remember not being able to read music. It's just always been there for me. It's always been a friend to me, like so many people, um, so many people relate to books as friends, you know, when you're feeling a certain feeling, you go to, into a book and you lose yourself. Well, I do that with music and I always have. Um, I went through school, elementary, middle, and high school, and college playing instrumental music. So I developed a lot of um, kind of, you know, helpful mm -hmm. musical knowledge through that. It's helpful to me in barbershop now. Um, I also play the piano, not very well. Um, I played it better when I was a kid than I do now. <laughs> but, um, you know, I plunk along and make myself happy, which is the whole point of it. I'm not out there to perform on. I, I will never play a piano in front of you. I, I guarantee that you don't want to hear it. But Just give me like three chords. <laughs> I can play. I can plunk out a chord if you know, if they don't have too many accidentals in them. So, you know, I'm not. I would never say I'm a pianist, but um, I have a lot of ancillary music experience. I'm not really solidly good at anything, except I would say I'm a pretty good singer. And that's been learned over time. So, um, so yeah, I've been a musician my whole life in various ways. And uh, harmonies always come really naturally to me. I remember my oldest sister, I think I was about four years old. And my oldest sister at the time, she would have been or she would have been eight years old and she was singing along with the radio but she wasn't singing the melody and I remember saying to her Susie that's not how the song goes and she goes <laughs> Jenny being <laughs> harmony and it was like the first time I'd ever heard about harmony when I was a little teeny tiny kid and from then on I was like well that sounds pretty cool and so <laughs> I've always been a harmony singer and uh, it's just always been part of me so um how I got into barbershop is really kind of funny um 
well, I don't know if you'll think it's funny or not. I, I do. Uh, when I was in church, when I was in high school, um, in the summer, the choir took the summer off. And then for the months of June and July and August, we would bring in special music on Sundays. And it would be guest singers or soloists or different groups coming in from the community. And um, one Sunday when I was in high school, there was a women's barbershop quartet who came in to sing <laughs> special music for that Sunday. And, you know, I was... I was too cool for that. It was just so weird. <laughs> um, they were old ladies and they were wearing <laughs> these pinafore skirts with the stripes. They looked like candy striper volunteers. <laughs> I mean, the old fashioned, you know what I'm talking about. When you think of old <laughs> Yeah, that's what it was. But... <laughs> It, it wasn't compelling to me at all from the perspective of how they looked. And I really kind of ridiculed them. You know, the youth group that night at Sunday night youth group really made fun of them. I would say it was not very Christian. <laughs> like, what is that? <laughs> right? uh, but what really caught my ear was the harmony that they were singing. And it was acapella and it was, yeah. and uh, I hadn't had any acapella singing experience before our church choir didn't do it way we always sang with the organ or the piano and so um that was compelling and as a harmony lover at that time even i thought well that's interesting that's new and different but i'm not gonna do it now because god they're so uncool besides <laughs> i was all in myself i was a teenager you know it was all about me so um i tucked that away in the back of my mind and then time goes by i'm working for the government i'm in my cafeteria one day at lunch and i saw a flyer on the on the bulletin board advertising for a sweet adelines course and i thought well i know what sweet adelines are that was that quartet that came to church 15 years ago whatever how many years ago and um so i thought well maybe maybe i'll do that one day when my kids are older because at the time i had babies you know infant toddler i tucked that away and I said, maybe later when the kids are grown. Well, then about a year later, I had a meeting at work with a, a person who I had never met before. And I was in a new job. And this person was in charge of my budget. And the meeting was for me to go and defend my budget request to this person who I'd never met. And I was really nervous about it because I was in a new job and I'd never really done budget work before. And I was like, oh, I sure hope I do this well because I wanted my organization to get the funding they need and all that stuff. I felt this real responsibility. And so I was really nervous. I dressed up for it. I really put on my best face. Um, Kind of like today, when I put my makeup on today. <laughs> <laughs> and I went to the office, and I met this lady named Sally Kelly, and I was just really trying to impress her oh my with my budget knowledge and my skills. And we got to started started talking about the business at hand, but then I saw on her wall in her office she had photographs of of like eighty women standing on risers wearing the same costume. And I said, well, what's that? I was just trying to grease her up, you know, get, get to know her a little bit, get her on my side. I was like, tell me about that. What's that? You know, cause they tell you, ask about the kids on the frames on the, on the desk, you know, ask your right, right. people about the family and get to know them that way. So I asked her about it and we never stopped talking about her Sweet Adelines chorus, which was Harbor City Music Company. So that day was a Wednesday well, Harbor City rehearses on a Wednesday. So that day I went home from work and I said, Dave, um, I met this lady at work. She belongs to this thing. I don't really know much about it, but I'm going to go to this thing. So <laughs> after dinner, I went to this thing and it blew me away. The Harbor City Music Company course is just a wonderful family, mm -hmm. wonderful musicians. I see several members here. Um, on this call and it was just you know they sang some songs and yeah yeah they sang some barbershop music which i didn't really like it was kind of square <laughs> it's funny when people say that <laughs> but they sang other stuff too that had more uh, musical variety to the chord structures and the harmonies were just more lush and more and it, one of the songs they sang that night was my foolish heart which was michael's and it was, oh god what a beautiful song i love that song and um that one is that was like okay how can I do this? I got to do this. So, I mean, mind you, this was just like one year after I'd said, well, maybe I'll do that when my kids are older. Right. So, exactly. yeah. So I, I, you know, Barbara just has a way of wheeling you in. If oh, you're a musician it, and you need this thing. It was right away. Oh, yeah. It was right away. I took home the audition materials, the, the, <laughs> cassette, tape, the cassette tape of cassette. the tracks. 
and the sheet music. And I got home at like 1030 at night and everybody in my house was asleep because I had babies and a working husband mm -hmm. and they're all sleeping. And I go <laughs> to the basement and I put the cassette tape into the karaoke machine. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> And I started learning that audition song that night at about 10.30 at night. And at 1.30, I went to bed and I knew the song. And I couldn't sleep because it was going around in my head. And I knew- Was it still That's Life? Because that's life, yep. <laughs> yep. Nice. Yep. And I woke up the next morning really tired, but excited. And I put the cassette in my car back when cars had cassette players. And I played it on my commute to work every day for the next six days. Well, no. however many work days there were. And I went to the next rehearsal the next Wednesday. I sang in a live quartet audition. And I um, guess who the section leaders were? Capri. So I got to sing with Jen Keithy and Kate Manhurst with Maggie Butts listening as my section leader. Wow. And I passed my audition. And I said, that that's nice. really cool. Yay. How do you join a quartet? And they're like, uh... <laughs> Slow down. You need to slow down. <laughs> yeah. Like, no, you don't know. Right. <laughs> I can do it. Yeah, and that was in 2003. And at the time, um, I didn't have babies. Now that I think about it, 2003, my kids were, um, they were nine and 11. But still, they were young. And I, I needed to devote my time to them. But also, I needed something for myself. So this was the best thing I ever did in my life for me. And yeah. I, I haven't looked back. I mean, I dived in with, head first on everything I was ever asked to do. I learned the entire Christmas repertoire and sang out probably. <laughs> wow. Yeah. I just don't retriever. We started, um, there's my daughter-in-law. Hey Beth. Good to see you. She just said she loves this. She's never heard the story before. Oh, I don't know. This is awesome. that, but I don't know. <laughs> never heard that. Anyway. So, um, so yeah, I just, we started the quartet in 2005 and, um, also, that was just kind of the, one of those things where you just jump, and you dive in, and you just do it. Just take one step at a time and keep on plugging. So, yeah. So when did Luster form? How did you all know, like, hey, we've got to do this, like, right now? Yeah, well, Lori Crowder and I, our lead, um, she and I would, we'd go out to um, the Rose restaurant after rehearsal on Wednesday night with several other people from the chorus. That was the chorus. Closed. And uh, um, uh, I'd have personal. I'm getting extra feedback. Sorry about that, ladies. And just give me one second. Technology, great till it's not. It's amazing until it's not. <laughs> Natalie, <laughs> if you are not on mute, please mute yourselves at this time. <laughs> Everyone muted. I'm going to. I'm checking. I got you covered. You are now muted. <gasps> no. Like hopscotch. <laughs> Okay, hang on. I'm going to try something else. Is there a mic on your computer, Natalie? Oh, it's better now. Is that better? Okay, I switched my microphones. I turned my phone off and my computer on. Okay, so where was I? Um, Lori and I would go out to dinner after rehearsal, and we would sing tags at the restaurant. And we did that for like a year. And then... Um, 
my husband and I, my husband and I were having discussions about how much time I was giving to the chorus, and it, you know, it caused a little bit of friction in in uh, the home life there. So, and I imagine so many members of Sweet Eyelines experienced that. Um, so he and I were working out a deal about how much time I was giving to the chorus versus the family, and it was a big change for our family when I joined. So um, it was an adjustment for all of us. Um, but in the spring of 2005. He came, he came with us with to regional, regional competition, competition and he and saw how much I loved it and how much and the culture was supportive of women and really empowering women. And so he agreed that weekend that, that um, we could, that I, that I, that he would support my joining a quartet. So that was wonderful. So it was really funny. It was really funny because Lori Crowder and I were walking from somewhere to somewhere else in the convention center at convention. And so we're walking and, and I said to her, so, so Dave said, said that it's okay if I join a quartet. She goes, oh, yeah. I mean, do you want to stay with me? <laughs> Dave gave the go. So yeah, she and I knew pretty quick that we wanted to sing together. And so when that happened, then we knew Lori Dreyer would be a good fit for us too. We had been tagging with her as well a lot recently. And we didn't quite have our tenor nailed down. So actually we started, the, tr the three of us started learning a song um, um, a buzz a song, because why not start, you know, start with, the with the hardest thing you've ever heard. Um, the three of us started singing a song, and uh, we pulled in Sandy Knapp to sing tenor for us for a while, but she wasn't able to commit to being a tenor in our quartet because she had other irons in the fire at that time. So um, so eventually we invited Laura Colosi, who at that time was Laura Rivera, to be our tenor. And here's how that went. Three of, us, Three of us sitting in my basement, in my basement talking. talking. Who do we want to invite? I think Laura. Yeah, okay. So we call Laura on the phone. Say, hey, Laura. What's going on? Are you busy? What are you doing? Why don't you come over to my house? We can sing a little bit. Yeah, okay. So we hang out. She comes over. She lived like two miles away from me. She comes over to my house, and the four of us are sitting in the basement, and we sing around a little bit of Harbor City repertoire. And the three of us look at each other and give each other a nod. And we say, Laura, how do you want to be in our quartet? How about that? That's how you know. She was totally ambushed, but. <laughs> and then Laura and then moved Laura to Italy five, five years, years later, years and so um, we invited Kate, Kate Markle pretty much the same way. <laughs> Which is a blessing. Oh, oh my, because it's hard, you know, yeah. finding yeah. different people to take your spot. Yeah, um, it's not easy it's not feeling, easy. feeling that missing piece. That's me. That's me. That's me. That's me. That's me. Yeah. It's not it's easy to that missing piece when it comes to your corset because with my corset right now, you know, we've had like three different things. I don't know why this is happening. You know what? Let's shut down Instagram. Shut down Instagram. All right. See you so later. So we will come to you guys later. Okay, bye.